Getting started with OpenWRT can be overwhelming due to the number of different firmware images and levels of device compatibility. This video walks through upgrading as simply as possible. This router was chosen because of its features, relatively low cost, and OpenWRT support. For a cost of 60 US dollars, the router supports two USB ports and four gigabit ethernet ports, which make it ideal for experimenting with OpenWRT. To begin, I've already hooked up my router to the cable modem and computer. I'm going to check the router's address by looking at the IPv4 default gateway that it automatically assigned to my computer. The router's default address is 192.168.0.1. Before making any changes, I verify the router is working by accessing Google. The next step is to open WRT.org and download the latest firmware. Look for the binaries download link. This router's firmware is in the AR71XX directory, in the generic subdirectory. There are a number of possible firmware images for this router's chipset, so be careful to choose the right one. Notice this router has two possible firmware images. Both images indicate they are for the WDR3600. Download the firmware image with the file name ending in squashfsfactory.bin. We have everything we need to upgrade the router's firmware. We'll access our router's configuration interface using the IPv4 gateway address obtained earlier in this video. The default username and password for this router is username admin with a password admin. Once logged into the configuration page, access the left side menu and choose System Tools. Scroll down and choose Firmware Upgrade. Click the button Choose File and select the firmware image downloaded from the OpenWRT.org site. Now we begin the upgrade process. The entire process took about five minutes. When the upgrade completes, the router will restart and have a different IP address. The configuration page no longer loads because OpenWRT assigns a default address of 192.168.1.1. We can verify this by going to check the IPv4 gateway address. Before checking the address, I'm going to disable and re-enable the network card to ensure the DHCP address of the computer is updated. The IPv4 gateway address has changed. We can now access the router using the new IP address. By default, the router has no password so we can simply log in with the username root. The system status page confirms the router has been updated and from here we can make all the required configuration changes like setting the root password. To prove the router is online and functioning, we'll check the Google home page. As you can see, it loads correctly. This concludes the tutorial. I hope you found it useful and a quick way to get OpenWRT up and running. Thank you for watching.